This is episode nine of There Just Has to Be a Better Way. And if you're still running X10 Home Automation, you're going to want to watch this video. Now, this is our original sub panel down in the cellar. And the next image here is of the ELK 9100 heavy duty relay that sits just to the left of the sub panel. We use that with X10 home automation to turn on our water pump because we're on a well. Now the thing about the ELK 9100 is it's not only X10 controlled, it's also a phase bridge and it has indicator lights and a manual push button switch. So it did a lot of things for us and it continued to work flawlessly until one day the local substation had some kind of an explosion and we were out without power for a few hours. However, there was a surge or something and it took out the 9100. Then we discovered that it was long out of production. So what are we going to use? Well, I, I talked to the ELK people and they said they had a 9200. The difference being it didn't have X10 control, although you could do it externally. It didn't have a switch. It didn't have lights. And also, most importantly, it didn't have a phase bridge. So we determined that it was going to take five pieces of equipment to make that 9200 run like the 9100. But the price was a lot less. And it was current production. So this is how we did it. The first piece of equipment that we needed was a phase bridge because without the 9100's phase bridge, half the house didn't work on X10 because it was on the wrong phase. So we picked up a X10 Pro XPCR phase bridge and mounted it on top of the sub panel as shown. The wiring for the phase bridge is fairly simple. You got the red wire going to one phase the black wire going to the other phase on the other side of the box, and the white wire going to the common bar. With that in place, all the X10 started working again, so everything was functioning except water. Next, for parts 2 and 3 of the 5 we needed, is a X10 appliance relay and a receptacle to plug it into. Now what we did with that sub panel to wire it, we just grabbed one leg of the 220 water pump breaker and the common and the ground and then we had 110 power to that receptacle and we plugged in the X10 appliance relay. And then I mounted up that giant 9200 ELK box to the right side of the sub panel. Now here's how the 9200 should be wired. The power from the breaker box, the 220 breaker for the water pump, comes in on that yellow Romex and goes to that contact. Then it goes out and into the top of the relay. Then when the relay is tripped, the power comes out the bottom of the relay. Then it goes through that contact and out the red and black wires to the water pump. And the whole thing is controlled by the wire at the bottom, which is the power coming from the X10 relay. So at this point, the basic wiring is complete. However, the original 9100 had a LED to indicate that it was on and functioning. So I grabbed a LED that I had, a 110 volt LED, and stuck it up there in the corner as you see and so now I had an indicator roughly like the 9100 did to indicate that I had power from the X10 relay to trip the 9200's relay. Now to wire up that LED, the LED wires in the upper left come down as red and black and they go to the two blue wire nuts as shown. Then on the red side, it comes down, swings around, and goes to that contact on the left-hand side with a loop connector. And on the other side, it goes where the black wire goes. So at that point, 
the LED will light when the X10 is tripped. Now it's just a matter of finishing up with my label keyboard and label the X10 receptacle for what it is. And then over on the 9200, you put the 220 volt water pump relay and an in-service date. And then the very last thing we did was we carefully peeled the stickers off the box that the 9200 came in and restuck them to the outside of the 9200 box. And that is how we updated our X10 heavy duty relay to a modern ELK 9200 so that it would turn our water pump on and off remotely with X10.